131, welcome to example eight. So in example eight, well really in examples eight, nine, and 10, we're really gonna shift gears. We're gonna go away from summing finite numbers of terms of a sequence to summing the terms of an infinite geometric sequence, which is kind of funky. So we're literally, we're gonna add numbers forever. We're not going to stop. All right, and you're gonna see this, this new symbol S of infinity. So imagine you had a geometric sequence, right? And you could continue that geometric sequence on forever and ever and ever, right? Any sequence, whether it's arithmetic or geometric or other, you could continue that pattern on forever and ever and ever, and that's what we're going to add this time out. We're gonna sum the terms of an infinite geometric sequence. Whereas before we were summing the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence or the first n terms of a geometric sequence. So in examples six and seven, we added the first eight terms of a sequence, right? But now we're gonna add infinite, infinitely many terms. All right, so if S of infinity of the terms of an infinite geometric sequence with first term A sub one and common ratio R, where, and this is key, where, the, where R has to be between negative one and one, all right, if this is all met, all right, so if this happens, then we know the infinite sum is the ratio of the first term to one minus r. But I stress this because this has to happen. If r is not between one and negative one, then this formula doesn't apply, and the sequence, or I should say the series, has no sum. All right, and so you'll also start to hear this, these phrases converge and diverge. All right, so let, let's talk about this. If r is between negative one and one, if your common ratio is between negative one and one, meaning it's a fraction, basically. Well, a fraction where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, all right? If it's a fraction between negative one and one, then we say the series converges to this number, all right? So it will converge, or I say, let me write series converges to a1 over one minus r, meaning it totals out, the sum is finite, even though the sequence is infinite, the sum is bounded by this number a sub one over one minus r. Okay, now if, I'm gonna put this off to the side here, if the absolute value of r is greater than one, meaning r is greater than one or it's less than negative one, then we would say s of infinity is divergent or you could say it diverges, meaning the infinite sum blows up to infinity. It doesn't actually have a bound. It doesn't have this formula applied. And I know that's a lot to take in, so I'll reference back to this a few times as we progress through this. All right, so with that, I want us to evaluate this series. All right, so you see we have four plus four fifths, plus four twenty-fifths, plus four over one twenty-fifth. All right, so Taking a look at it, it says it right here that it's an infinite geometric series, but maybe you're starting to see the pattern. Because even though four isn't a fraction, this is four over one, so you can see to go from here to here, right, I divided by five. To go from here to here, I divided by five. I divided by five. So maybe you can see the common ratio is one-fifth. And then maybe you can't. Maybe you're like, dude, I'm not getting there. Okay, if you don't see the common ratio of one-fifth, let's take a look at it a little bit closer. All right, so here I could say R would have to be the ratio of a current term to a previous term. So in this case, I did A sub two in ratio to A sub one, right? Because A sub two is the more recent term, I put it in ratio to the previous term. If we go to our calculators and we take four fifths and we divide it by four, I'm looking at one fifth, right? So I'm multiplying these terms by one fifth, or another way of saying that is I'm dividing by five. All right, so one thing to take note of, or another thing to take note of, that is important, I need us to take note that one-fifth is between negative one and one. If it wasn't, we would just say this series diverges. But because it is between one and one-fifth, the series is going to converge to some number. And we'll calculate this number in just a moment. So I want you to take note that the absolute value of R is less than one. So we can continue with this formula. All right, another key piece of information that we see here is that a sub one is equal to four. All right, so if I wanna get the infinite sum, s of infinity, it will be a sub one over one minus r. All right, so let's take a look at this. In this case, it will be four over one minus one fifth. All right, now again, I'm gonna be real careful when I plug this into my calculator. I'm gonna make sure I'm 
putting parentheses around that de denominator because it is a binomial. And when I do that, I get five. All right, so I want us to take a step back and really try and figure out what on earth is going on here because there's a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and instead of adding an infinite number of sum series, excuse me, an infinite number of terms, I want to just add the first two. And I want you to see where we are. All right, so let me clear this out. If I just did four plus four fifths, I want you to see that it's the number five point, or 4.8. Okay, it's not quite five. It's not this number. It's not the infinite sum. But if I just add the first two terms, it's 4.8. Let me add the next term. If I add to it now, four over 25, right? So now I'm finding S sub three. Do you see I got a little bit closer to five? Right, well now let me add the next term. Let me add four over 125, right? And I got even closer to five, right? And this is just S sub four. So right here we had S sub two, S sub three, S sub four. If I wanted to add the next term, that would be four over 125 times one fifth because I have a geometric sequence, right? And then I'm getting even closer to five, all right? And I could add the next term and the next term and the next term. And I could add an infinite number of terms. And when I add that infinite number of terms, imagine I keep writing these terms of the sequence out and I keep adding them to my total. If I did that for infinity, right, for infinite numbers of terms, my total would just be five. All right, so it's kind of funky. I want you to take a step back and think about that. You could add an infinite number of numbers and they're bounded by the number five, which on the one hand is kind of crazy, right? To think like I could add an infinite number of numbers and it, it doesn't blow up to infinity. And let me show you how this can work. And it's all based on the fact that the absolute value of R is less than one. All right, so I'm gonna do a little area problem. I'm gonna shade a post-it. And so that I don't scribble on my work here, I'm, I, I have my pink post-it ready to go. All right, so I want you to take a look at the area that I'm gonna shade. And the rule is I can only shade half of the unshaded area. That is the rule I have to pit, stick to. All right, but what I want you to keep track of as we go through here, I want you to keep track of the total area shaded for each iteration. All right, that's what we're gonna keep track of as we move through this problem. Okay, so right now, none of my post-it is shaded. And the rule is I can shade half of the unshaded area. So let me shade this. All right, so I'm going from nothing being shaded to half of my post-it was shaded. All right, so half of my post-it was shaded. All right, great. Now, on the second iteration, I'm allowed to shade in half of the unshaded area. So I want you to take a look right now. As I go from the first iteration to the second iteration, all right, I can now add this on. All right, did the total area I've shaded now increase? Yes, it did. It went from being half to a half of a half, or really that would be to one fourth, right? So I've now shaded three fourths of the total area of this pink post-it, all right? Now in the next iteration, we're gonna keep track of the total area shaded. All right, I'm allowed to shade half of what was unshaded. So I want you to take a look, right? Right now I have three-fourths of the total area shaded. And did we see it increasing, right? I'm shading a little bit more and I'm going to add to it, right? Now I'm not gonna keep writing this out, but I want you to start to feel this out, right? I'm gonna shade half of the unshaded area. So my post-it is a little bit more covered, right? The total area shaded keeps increasing. And I'm gonna go half, and then I'm gonna go half, right? and then I'm gonna go half, and you can start to see that the area that I'm shading, it's getting larger and larger and larger, right? But even if I keep shading half of the unshaded area, half of the unshaded area, all right, I want you to feel out that the area that I'm gonna shade is bounded, right? I'm not gonna shade the entire world. I'm actually not gonna shade past this post-it, but I'm gonna keep on adding numbers forever. Right? I'm gonna keep going half of what I have left, half of what I have left, half of what I have left, yet I will never shade the entire post-it because at any given iteration, I'm only shading half of the unshaded area. So I will always leave the other half unshaded. But again, in terms of the total area shaded, it's gonna be bounded by the area of this pink post-it note. There's no way I'll ever go outside of this pink post-it note. So it's kind of funky, right? To think that you could add all of these numbers forever, 
right? These are the numbers that I'm adding. I just keep doing this by a half, right? 256, I could go forever. And they will never blow up to infinity, right? This actually gets bounded and we can talk about what it's bounded by a little bit later. Um, I, I won't, well, we can do it right now actually. It would be bounded by a sub one over one minus r. A sub one was one half. One minus r is one minus one half. This winds up just being one because I'm shading in one post-it. But I want you to see that you could add numbers forever, right? And you can add them forever and they don't blow up to infinity. In fact, they don't even get that large. This series just totals out at one. And the key, the key component to that is that you have to have a ratio that's in between negative one and one, or a lot of times we say its absolute value is less than one. If it is, it's gonna have a bounded sum. All right, but if it's not, all right, if this ratio is larger than one or smaller than negative one, then this sum is going to be infinity. All right, and we would call that a divergent series. All right, so with that, we're gonna to head to example nine and we're gonna practice this formula. And when we get to say convergent versus divergent, and just so I'm clear here, we would call this a convergent series. And I would say it's convergent because it converges to the number five. All right. Okay, so with that, we're gonna practice this and I will catch you in example nine. I'll see you in a bit, bye.